You know, recently I came across this YouTube video of a live performance of the song called Someone You Loved by Louis Capaldi. And it's not overstating things to say that that particular video completely changed my life. And so, as you probably know, Louis Capaldi is this really famous singer from the United Kingdom whose most famous song, arguably, is Someone You Loved. And to say that it's basically a song about heartbreak and loss is kind of an understatement, right? And so, certainly there is an element. And so, when you listen to the song, you can tell that Louis Capaldi is drawing upon a past experience of being with a significant other. Someone who loved him, someone that he loved in return. But more to the point, someone who helped him through the tough times. And again, this is what you hear up and down the song, right? And so this idea that when I was down, you were there for me, and now you're gone, and, and I guess in retrospect, I was getting used to being someone that you loved. And so, yeah, certainly this experience of love gained and love lost, but more to the point, this idea that, you know, now that you're gone, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. How am I going to get through difficult moments which continue to come in the absence of, of you? And clearly it's resonated, that song has resonated with so many people around the world who have experienced precisely that. Again, not just heartbreak, but this idea of how can I navigate through life in the absence of a love which saved me and, and redeemed me in a certain sense. Anyways, with regards to the video I referenced at the outset, basically it's a recording of a live performance of Someone You Loved by Louis Capaldi at this concert that he did at Glastonbury in 2023. And so, Louis Capaldi, if you don't know, he suffers from Tourette's Syndrome. And Tourette's Syndrome is this neurological disorder which affects a certain number of people which manifests itself in terms of tics. And so, involuntary expressions of speech or involuntary movements of the body affecting, for example, the neck and the shoulders. And so, what Louis Capaldi will do at the beginning of his concerts is that he'll be very open about the fact that he has Tourette's Syndrome. And so, he basically says, just to kind of paraphrase, like, look, if you see me, all of a sudden jerking around in a certain sense or having any switching movements when I'm doing the concert, don't worry, I just have Tourette's and it'll just kind of play out in, in its own time. And so basically in the context of this concert that I'm talking about, apparently even before the performance of this particular song, Someone You Loved, people could tell that Louis Capaldi was already struggling with Tourette's. But apparently it really came to a head as he was performing this really famous hit single. And so just kind of imagine a situation, right? So here are all these people, all these people who have certainly come to see Louis Capaldi, but in particular, they've come to see him sing this song, this beloved song, which is world famous and, and the song which basically made his career. And so he's about to sing it, but then all of a sudden Tourette's syndrome kicks in and he can't sing it. I mean, even right now, think about yourself, about moments where you've gone through similar situations, right? Like... And before people that I want to have admire me and love me in a certain sense, and so I want to perform or, or look a certain way or come across a certain way, but, but I can't, and I know it. And so I'm filled with fear and filled with terror. Again, in a certain sense, I'm filled with shame. A lot of us would, would back away, and we, we have backed away from precisely those types of situations, but, but not this guy. He stayed despite what was going on in his heart, and he tried still to perform for his fans, but, but he just couldn't. And the people, this is the beautiful thing about that video, right? So you see the people, and they, they start singing a song. And not just a little bit, like they sing, they sing the whole thing. They sing the whole thing, and, and you could tell throughout the song, he, he wants to do this, he wants to sing the song for his fans. And it seems like at most, all I can get out are like 10 words. But the people, they're not thrown off, they're not scandalized. They're basically serenading him. And so they basically sing the entire song to Louis Capaldi. And then when it's done, they, they break out in applause. Like really beautiful stuff, you know? And um, I remember kind of watching that and, and thinking, you know, in singing this song in this way to Louis Capaldi in this moment, the assembled audience was trying to thank him for two things, right? First of all, thank you for this song. Like we all know intuitively that in order to write a song of this, this magnitude, of this caliber of excellence and beauty, you need to go there. You need to go back to that place of, of pain and again, the, the acquisition of love and the loss of love. 
So again, thank you for this song. Thank you for you. But secondly, I think they were also thanking him for this moment, for this opportunity. We know that the song, Someone You Loved, is about you. We know that you can't write a song like this or perform it the way that you do without being generous with your vulnerable hearts. And beneath that, again, there's this fear. Will I ever be loved in my vulnerability? You know what? At least for now, we will give you that experience. And it's our honor and it's our privilege to, to love you as you have loved us by, again, being generous with your vulnerable heart. So overall, just this amazing and beautiful moment captured on film. Now, obviously, there's a bunch more things we can say about that particular video and that particular performance and the response and the part of the audience. But just to kind of flesh out the concept, I want to draw a line from that video to a recent experience I had in the context of Labor Day weekend. And so basically, in the context of Labor Day weekend, I was leading a retreat called the GT Retreat. And basically, GT is an English rendering of a Chinese expression, which basically means Canada East, to reflect the fact that many of the participants in this retreat were of Asian descent. And the working title of the retreat was Broken and Beloved. And so the whole point of it was to lead the people assembled at the retreat to you know, have courage in terms of looking at their own wounded hearts and learn how to gain some insight into their condition and reach a, a stage of healing with the Lord and also in the context of the Christian community. And I have to admit that whether I'm giving a retreat or just giving a one-off live talk, at the very beginning, especially when it's a new congregation or a new audience, I'm always trying to assess the group. So it seems like on the face of it, we're just making small talk and, you know, telling jokes and whatnot. But in reality, again, I'm trying to assess the group. Like, where are you at? What do you know? What can you respond to? How badly do you want it in a certain sense? And with this group, all the way, I mean, they didn't just have this amazing capacity intellectually and emotionally, but also this great desire to just go there. You know, I want to get better. I want to change. I want to go God's way, even though it might be scary and even though it might require a certain vulnerability on my part. And again, kudos to the group. I have never seen this level of commitment in that regard, especially sustained over such a long period of time, such as, you know, Labor Day weekend. And for me, this really culminated when the participants of the retreat were giving their respective testimonies. And so basically what happened at the end, there was this open mic. And basically anyone who wanted to give their testimony at the end of the retreat was welcome to do so. All they had to do was step up at the mic and just say whatever they wanted to say. And I don't know about you, but I often find that a lot of times when it comes to people giving testimonies in these types of contexts, the testimonies can be kind of canned and superficial and kind of annoying in a certain sense, you know? So something like, you know, before I was this and now I'm that and, you know, God has given me this insight into my life and now my thing is resolved and, you know, if you try hard, you can be like me too. Like something like that, which again, can be kind of annoying. But, you know, in contrast, these testimonies that were given in this unrehearsed open mic setting at the end of this particular GT retreat in this particular year, they were absolutely amazing and inspiring. And quite honestly, I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. And so I want to give you a couple of examples, but at the outset, I just want to be honest that what I say right now is not going to do justice to what these people actually said. Truly you had to be there. And again, what they said was absolutely inspiring. So for example, there was this young lady who came up and she was really brave. And she said, you know what? I, I just realized that I have no friends. Like I know people and we have, you know, conversations, but nothing deep, nothing significant, nothing, nothing rich. So, yeah, I got people in my life, but I feel all alone. And I got to admit, because of like past stuff, I'm like afraid of meeting new people. But I decided to take a chance over the course of this weekend. And now I have one friend. And it just means the world. And, you know, I'm really happy about that. There was another young girl who came up and said, you know, when I look back at high school, there were a lot of boys that I wanted to like me, but they ended up liking my best friends instead of me. And at the time I, I said it was okay, but looking back, it wasn't okay. I felt a lot of pain from that. And I still feel a lot of pain from that. And I just, I just feel at times that I'll never, I'll never be loved. But then, you know, when I took it to prayer, I, you know, God said to me, you know, this thing that you think that you wanted, it wasn't really love. And so now I'm, I'm just in the process of trying to discover what, what true love is. And all the testimonies, in a certain sense, kind of had that vibe. 
like here's this thing which has been a painful wound in my heart and you know, perhaps I'm just realizing it now and I don't have any easy solutions. I don't have any quick fixes, but I know that I'm loved in that space and I have hope to work through these things with the Lord and with the people in my life. And that's the other part of this really wonderful moment of testimony, right? So just the, the manner in which the Christian community received all these people as they went to those dark places and expressed these things publicly. And so a lot of times what you would see is that these people would come up not alone, but with an emotional support buddy who would be identified as such. This is my emotional support buddy. And so when the person would stop, as they often would, stop to pause, stop to collect themselves, stop to cry, their emotional support buddy would, would hug them. And everyone, gosh, this is so beautiful. They would stop and just receive the moment. It didn't feel weird. It didn't feel rushed. It didn't feel awkward. We're standing on holy ground. Here's this person who is sharing with the community these tender places in our hearts. And by God, we're going to be with them. We're going to love them in this moment. Like they all, they all recognized the moment and they all rose to the occasion. God bless them. And it was powerful. There was even a moment where someone came up and you could tell he had a speech impediment. And he was struggling as he was stuttering to just get through what he wanted to say. But you could also tell that he felt safe. He felt like, you know, I, I can take my time. I can struggle publicly with these people because I can feel their love. I'm convinced of their love. There were even moments near the end of his talk where you could tell he was looking at people in the front row and just looking for a sense of reassurance as he was struggling to kind of complete his thoughts and express them verbally. And the people were amazing. They, they were nodding with assurance, trying to give him confidence, like, it's okay, take your time, we love you. Incredible stuff. Absolutely incredible stuff. Something I'll remember for the rest of my life. Now, obviously, friends, there's kind of a lot going on here. But I suppose the reason why I'm bringing this stuff up, whether we're talking about the Lewis Capaldi concert or this extended moment of testimony in the context of the GT retreat, is to highlight the fact that even though there is this recurring temptation to back away from pain or inconvenience or the wounded places in our hearts by playing it safe, by not taking risks, by making it your preeminent concern, to pursue pleasure and avoid pain. You can do it in a certain sense, but it comes at a terrible price. It comes at the expense of your humanity. Because the reality is that you simply cannot become the person that God is calling you to be unless you walk the narrow path, unless you walk the way of suffering love, unless you walk the way of the cross. And just to be clear, the whole point is to not simply resign yourself to the fact that your life at times is going to be inconvenient or painful or difficult. No, the whole point is if you have the courage and the wherewithal to work through your pain with the Lord and in the cause of a loving, accepting, accompanying Christian community, amazing, wonderful things can happen. And so truly in the words of the gospel, whoever wishes to save their life in the sense of playing it safe, not taking risks, avoiding the cross at all costs, will ultimately lose their life. But in contrast, the one who loses their life for Christ and the sake of the gospel will save it. They will find salvation and redemption, not just for themselves, but for the sake of the world. And may God bless you all.